Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, of HurricaneTrack.com. It is Friday, the 19th of August, 2022, and you have stumbled across the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. So good to have you with me. Lots to talk about as we end the week here. The tropics starting to perk up. Is our next name storm lurking down in the Bay of Campeche? Possibly. The recon folks are on their way now to check it out. They're probably just about arriving as we speak. I'll talk about that uh, and what's going on elsewhere in the tropics. A theory that I have regarding September, October, and November, and some evidence to back that theory up. And, very importantly, the potential for some flooding rain, yes, flooding rain in parts of Texas, the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, Waco maybe down towards Austin, where you guys have been in this drought this year. Floods, are you serious? Yes. I'll explain it as we move forward in the rest of today's update. First, in the Bay of Campeche down here, southwest Gulf of Mexico region, whichever way you want to look at it, invest 99L. The L is for Atlantic. Remember, we go 90 through 99 on these invest numbers, areas of investigation. We're all the way up to 99, and it'll start over again with 90L, probably, by the way, off of Africa over here in a couple of days. A little teaser there for you as we go forward. But anyway, this is the 70% chance area and it'll probably be heading towards northeastern Mexico over here somewhere. And depending on what recon finds, it wouldn't shock me if we get a potential tropical cyclone advisory package somewhere in this area over the next few hours. Wouldn't shock me. Not my call. I'm just saying it might. There's a pretty good little low-level, maybe mid-level spin. Uh, probably more mid-level now that I think about it, just looking at this. You got to have it down at the surface, not just at the mid levels of the atmosphere. The air has to be pulled in uh, down at the surface. You got to have that skeleton, so to speak, the low level center of circulation. And that is what the recon flight is uh, going to try to figure out. Uh, the upper level winds are fairly favorable, pretty good anticyclonic flow above this system. You do not have wind screaming across the top of it, cutting the storms off and blowing them all in one direction. You also don't have a whole bunch of arcs coming out from these clouds down here where the air is rushing away. Those little arc clouds are outflow boundaries. So, you know, you add all that up and you say, all right, this system looks fairly well organized. And you can just look at the satellite picture, probably show it to a four-year-old and they would say, yeah, it looks pretty good. And that's what I'm saying. You do this long enough, and a lot of people have been watching these for many years now, especially in the era of high resolution satellites and you just know that's trying to ramp up you know regardless of what the global computer models are saying or are forecasting that looks like it's trying to develop some and uh, it's going to bring a lot of rain and maybe some wind and coastal flooding issues to parts of uh, Mexico maybe South Texas so we got to watch it and that's what they're doing sending the recon plane in there and we will know a lot more here in the next couple of hours or so Water temperatures, definitely not a hindrance down here. I showed this on the What's Up segment this morning. 30 degrees Celsius, and uh, that's about 85 Fahrenheit, so plenty of warm water for this to work with. In fact, that water down there is warmer than it should be by a little bit, uh, maybe a half a degree to three quarters of a degree Celsius. It's an added energy area. The La Nina still holding on pretty good here, starting to erode the warm anomalies away again in the eastern Pacific. Meanwhile, the main development region also warming up. Uh, this is still there, this colder area in the subtropics. A lot of talk about that and different terminologies relating to the very stable air mass that's been sitting out here over the last several weeks. Hey, the weather is changeable. It's not going to stay there forever, and eventually things are probably going to change. We'll look at that in more detail in just a moment. All right, sometimes the global models don't see these systems very well. This is the Euro from the 12Z run today at the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. That's just short of a mile up. And that's that vorticity that I talk about so often, that low-level spin. And, you know, with computer uh, programming of any kind, and for those of you that are in the field, I think you'll appreciate this. Your input is what determines your output. And if the input is not very robust in this situation, there's not a lot of heat, 
vorticity energy down there. If there's just not much there that gets input into the model, the model doesn't see it to begin with, then the output is also going to be pretty weak overall. And what I mean by that, these big heat sources and areas of vorticity that we call tropical waves, they roll off Africa, and they're very easy for the models to pick up on. There are observations that come out of Dakar, for example, upper air observations, um, different balloon launches in the Caribbean. There's just different ways to sample the atmosphere. This system is kind of small compared to these larger areas of heat and energy that come rolling off Africa, so it's easy for the models to just kind of not even notice that they're there. They kind of uh, get ignored, if you will. But then they start to blossom. The models pick them up. Recon data gets in there, and you get more input, and that leads to better output, and therefore you get a better forecast. So we've seen this before, these Bay of Campeche systems that are small, kind of slip in between the cracks of the global models. The higher resolution models that can resolve these areas better uh, catch on and we start to see what happens. And eventually we will get the H-Wharf, which is designed for hurricanes, tropical cyclones in general, the H-Mon, and even to some extent the convectively allowing models, the HRRR or the 3-kilometer NAM and whatever, they tend to overdo it by a lot, but their resolution is such that they might pick up on this better. They certainly did with 98L. So there's just a little bit of a lesson for you as we get started here. It's small, and it's just probably not being picked up very well in the guidance. Nevertheless, as we move through the Euro from today, the 12Z run, and we're going out to 24 hours, it approaches the coast of northeast Mexico there, makes landfall probably stronger than what we're seeing here. 70% chance, according to the National Hurricane Center, that becomes at least a depression. And then it comes in there to northeast Mexico, some energy, and onshore flow over here towards South Texas. And then this piece of energy is going to combine with another piece of energy that's going to slide out of New Mexico and vicinity. And all of this is going to create a big rain event for Northeast Texas, which I'll show you in more detail in just a moment. First, though, let's broaden this out uh, to the bigger picture. Here's the west coast of Africa over here. Uh, and this is what I mean. There's this small area. This is 24 hours out. So this is tomorrow morning, Saturday, August 20th. By the way, the official start of the ringing of the bell, so to speak. Dr. William Gray used to do that at Colorado State University. He would ring the bell, ushering in the climatological ramping up of the, uh, of the Atlantic hurricane season. And right on cue, we'll be watching this and this over here. Now, this area out in the eastern Atlantic is part of a huge overall gyre of you know, different wind flow and some energy out there, large area of vorticity, and the model can pick up on that pretty well. You see that. But sometimes you get these smaller pockets of energy that come off, and they ramp into this, uh, or wrap into this overall gyre, and then ramp, trying to use wrap and ramp in the same, at the same time, and they can't occupy the same space. But they will. They will ramp up and you get a tropical cyclone out of it that starts to head off to the west. So there's a lot going on, even though there doesn't appear to be a lot going on. So let's move this out. Uh, this is nice, by the way, that Dr. Cowan has incorporated the um, more detailed version of the Euro into his website. So we're going out into time. This is 48 hours and then 72. Well, look what happens. By hour 72, a couple things. Hey, there's a little small system just west-northwest of the Cape Verde Islands. Another piece of energy coming across Africa. And then related a little bit to our 99L, this little piece of energy comes in through Texas that's going to settle in over northeast Texas. And, boy, that's going to unleash a lot of rain. We definitely need to talk, need to talk about that before all is said and done here. So let's just move this on out into time by day five, and that's where we will end this. Uh, hey, I mean, the euro is interesting. There's a little small tropical system there. Another piece of energy trying to come off there. This is still, by the way, only August 24th. The potential that we could have one name storm here, maybe. Maybe another one here. That would be number two. That's like my sideways one. And then could this be the makings of number three before August is all said and done? Possibly. 
And that would certainly change a lot of ideas that the season is slow. It's not even the end of August yet. We could have three named storms here within a week's time. I mean, we'll see. It's not set yet for sure, but by day five, that certainly is an interesting look. And there's that energy there, that vorticity maximum over eastern Texas, almost right over Dallas. Jeez, that's going to be interesting. We need to talk about that, and I will in just a moment. Very important. All right, so the Madden-Julian oscillation heading into phases that very much favor the western hemisphere to become busy with tropical cyclones and coinciding with the exact ramping up of the climatological peak. It's not like we're hitting August 20th and beyond and the MJO is over in the western Pacific and there's five typhoons out there or whatever. This is a very interesting look uh, and it's still in the null phase by the way. It's about right here. This circle is what we call the null phase or no discernible MJO activity is another way to look at it. But then the ensembles and the mean here all project the MJO to amplify. And then it kind of deamplifies fairly quickly on the Euro with the ensembles having a lot of different variables related to that. Uh, and that's why the mean and the different guidance points are important. Bottom line though is the next week or so, it looks like we're going to be heading into a more favorable phase of our good friend, the Madden-Julian Oscillation. Now the uh, JMA, Japanese Meteorological Agency, has a stronger amplified MJO here, and the ensembles are way more enthusiastic than is the Euro for what it's worth. Now we could go into, well, which one's more reliable? That could take an hour to explain. There's a lot of different verification papers, charts, and graphs. Bottom line, the JMA is a reliable guidance system overall and that it aligns pretty well with the euro gives me some pretty good confidence here they're not going to line up perfectly why they don't hey i don't even know that that's a whole other story but just something to keep in mind here as we head towards the end of the month all right all right so this is an interesting tweet here from philippe papin uh one of the forecasters at the national hurricane center 98l made it all the way across the Rio Grande in and, and the vorticity part of it itself stayed in Mexico with rain kind of get incorporated into the monsoonal flow, making it all the way in, in, into New Mexico and to Arizona where today they are sandbagging in Tucson in anticipation of potentially a moderate risk of flooding as all that moisture still with 98L almost became a tropical cyclone um, just a few days ago, as we all remember, that is quite an extraordinary journey. And this is important because at the end of Philippe's animation here, this incredible annotated GIF animation, I love it. Look at what comes into the bottom right-hand corner. And he mentions it. It was a little earlier today, so it's still at 60%. But that is 99L, and that moisture could come up and get incorporated into the vorticity and energy that's going to slide into Texas and that leads me to my next graphic right here. This, my friends, is very big. We get rid of me because I want to focus more on the graphic than my face. Very, very important here. Look at that. We're talking more than a half a foot, potentially, of rain over the next seven days as moisture from 99L gets pulled north with a piece of energy that slides in from the northwest that combines here over Texas that could be a really, really big problem. Uh, we're talking the um, the hill country, I almost called it the foothills. The hill, I just got to slow down. The hill country, you know, Waco, uh, Austin, up the I-35 corridor towards Dallas-Fort Worth. All of those areas, people have been talking about, we need the rain, we need the rain. It's been so dry, very severe drought conditions there. And then within a week, it could flip. You got all that hard, impermeable surface from being baked this year at 100 degrees plus and a ton of rainfall coming. This potentially could be a major news making item. One that I might actually, if the tropics aren't needing my attention, may think about covering in person with some of our equipment. More on that later. It's just, it certainly is on my radar. No pun intended. It should be on yours too if you live in this area. This is going to be a developing story over the coming days with a little bit of a connection here to the tropics. And you can see what I mean by that. Watch down here. This is the precipitable water 
Look at the flow comes up out of the Gulf right into eastern Texas. This is basically currently. Watch what happens over the next few days. That little slug there, not very noticeable, but that darker green, that's 99L, and that associated moisture does get pulled into the flow down there, gets pinched and squeezed, and then we get all that rainfall here in this part of Texas where it's been in drought as of late. So a little bit of a connection to the tropics there, as we saw with 98L and what it is doing over in uh, the southwestern U.S. All right, so a lot to keep up with. Uh, I think that as we get into September, that things have kind of shifted a little bit. And September will kind of be like August, that it'll kind of start out a little busy and they get busier. And then October would be like September where it just goes gangbusters. That's my theory anyway, that we've just kind of shifted things a little bit, uh, maybe a couple of weeks or so, that instead of it right on cue, following our calendars and our charts and graphs of history, that sometimes nature does what nature is going to do and it doesn't follow our calendars very well. And all that evidence I showed you, the warm sea surface temperatures, the anomalies, the upper pattern setting up favorably with the MJO, um, I think the thermodynamics will eventually be there. That stability out on the eastern Atlantic will eventually mix out. And once we get into September, probably through the first part of November, it could be a very busy time in the Atlantic Basin. Don't count it out just yet and make sure you stay on top of it. All right, that's what I'm here to help you do. Look at the bigger picture put things into perspective, and also keep you aware of even other weather events outside of directly related to impacts from the hurricane season. All right? All right. Well, don't forget, on YouTube, it's growing. We appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. Like and share with your friends, family, colleagues, wherever. Post it, link it, share it. We appreciate it very much. It helps us to grow, and it helps to get you and your friends and your colleagues and whoever else informed. That's my job. That's what I do for you. All right. All right. Is that going to be our next name storm? We'll go back to the title card. We shall see. It'll be a cliffhanger for sure. Um, again, I think it's got a pretty good possibility. We'll watch and see. I'll be around all weekend, of course, staying on top of it. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Hurricane Track, and I'll be posting stuff there as the info comes in. All right. All right. Have a great rest of your Friday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a piece of your attention, a part of it. It's a lot going on out there. It's nice that you give Mark some of your time. I do appreciate it. Um, so that's it. I'm done. I'll be back in the morning with another What's Up segment, and we'll see. Do we have a new tropical storm or not? Eh, we'll have to find out together. Again, have a great rest of your Friday. I am Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you throughout the weekend ahead.